So we're in our series on core concepts. We've done the core concept of oneness, understanding there's one infinite power, one infinite presence, one infinite mind, and it created everything out of it. We talked about the triune nature of God or the divine or the infinite, that there's spirit, mind, and body. And today we're going to talk about the core concept of causative power. You see, causative power is the idea that our thoughts, beliefs, and consciousness act as the cause. And the conditions in our lives are the effect. So what are we basically talking about here? We're talking about a law of cause and effect. In other words, before an effect can happen, there has to be a cause. And before, if you want to change an effect, you've got to change the cause. You see, our inner world, our mind, creates the outer world of our experience. When we want to change something in our lives, we must start by changing our thinking. This principle is at the heart of science of mind, and it is key to manifesting the life we desire. It's real important. And Ernest Holmes said this all the time. Our thoughts are things. Change your thinking. Change your life. You can be looking at something. And if you change the thought you have about it, you change your experience about it. I want you to think about a time. Think about your mom. Everyone has had a mom, or maybe you haven't. Then think about your dad. Or think about someone that you love, that loves you. And think about how they did something and it made you feel good. And how at another time they may have done the same thing and it made you feel bad. Was it the change in the thing? No. It was the change in what you thought about it. You could be a young boy or a girl and your mother does all this great nurturing stuff. Packs a beautiful lunch for you, puts notes in your lunch when you go to school. It is just, and gives you these beautiful young treats. But then you become a teenager and she's doing the same thing. But now you're, you're thinking as a teenager and guess what? You don't want those notes. People are looking. You get embarrassed by that. The thing didn't change. Your thoughts about it did. You see, everything in the universe begins with a thought. Before anything can exist in the physical world, it must first exist as an idea in the mind. Think about the chair you're sitting in. It did not exist until someone had the idea of a chair. Until someone came up with an idea of an automobile, we didn't have automobiles. We rode in what? Chariots or wagons being pulled by horses or we rode on horses or we walked. Everything new starts with an idea before it can exist in the physical world. If we constantly think thoughts of abundance, joy, and possibility, the universe responds to those thoughts by creating experiences that reflect them. Conversely, if we dwell on thoughts of lack, fear, or limitation, we create those experiences that mirror those beliefs. Think about it. Your thoughts determine everything, everything in your experience. I remember something growing up I didn't have a good relationship with money because we didn't have money. We were, we were sort of on the poorer side. We were probably low class middle, lower class middle is what I would call it. But one thing we always did have was food. We always had good, fresh food. So from the standpoint of thinking, we were abundant with the food we weren't abundant with the money. My job 
was to change the thinking that I can be abundant with the food and I can be abundant with money. And that took work. But I had to change my thoughts about money. Here's another one. Change your thoughts about your health. What are we taught? That our DNA, our parents' medical history is going to determine who we are. My dad had heart conditions, blood pressure conditions, alcoholic, on meds, bunches of meds. Mom had all sorts of health issues, died of cancer. Here I am. They had all these things starting when they were in their 50s and 60s. Here I am, 73. I've got none of them. I don't buy into the illusion that my, my DNA controls me. DNA is a tendency. The atmosphere that you create for the cells in your body determines where you're going to go. If you look at Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, he talks about this. He was a cellular biologist and he found the environment in which to, you put the cells will change the DNA of the cells. So if you can live in an atmosphere that is not highly stressful, you're going to change the DNA of your cells. See, it isn't about positive thinking. I really want to get rid of that. It's about directed thinking. Because what may be positive for you is negative for someone else. Or what you think is positive for you may not really be positive for you. I really like the term directed thinking. In other words, I'm controlling the direction of my thought. I'm controlling my thoughts toward health. I'm controlling my thoughts through abundance. What I may say is abundance is not the same as you. So what I say is positive, it may not be positive for you. We're all different. So I like to be more precise with my words. So I really like the word directed thinking. You see, thoughts are powerful. But it is our belief that truly sets the creative process in motion. Our beliefs become the mold through which the law creates in exact proportion. So let's talk about this idea. So what then is a belief? The way I've defined a belief is this. A beliefs are all of your thoughts, words, actions, and feelings aligned toward a specific result held persistently and consistently, consciously and unconsciously. You see, there's no room for error in my definition of belief. I mean, you know this is it by the definition I just gave you. And when you have that belief, it creates a mold. It creates an exact mold of the experience or the thing that you want. And then the unformed substance that exists everywhere in the quantum field, the law puts it into that mold and bursts it in exact proportion. It gives you nothing more or nothing less than what you believe. So what? guess what? Your life mirrors to you what you believe. Exactly. So if you don't like what you're seeing in the mirror of your life, you've got to change your mold. Let's talk about the creative process in action. The first thing is you've got thought. It's the first stage of the creative process. This is where the process always begins. You have a desire, an intention, and a mental image of something you want to create or experience in your life. You've come up with this by seeing it maybe present in someone else or your imagination. I truly believe that the whole creative process begins with imagination and then we start to build thoughts around it. We build ideas around it. We create an intention and a mental image and a desire. And that from there, we go to the second stage. That's the law. The law takes the thought and begins to mold it into form. This is the stage where the belief comes into play. If the thought is backed by a strong belief, the law acts upon the belief, shaping it into physical manifestation. But if the belief is weak, it's really not a deep belief, 
It's not bought into at all levels of thought, words, actions, and feelings. You say, you may have a belief that you're abundant. Then you're joking around and you're making jokes that says, well, I don't have a pot to pee in. The law hears that because if you truly believe you're abundant, you're not going to say that second statement. So you can't fool the law because it brings and gives you exactly what you put out there. The third stage is what? Manifestation. It's the physical manifestation. It's the point where the thought or the belief becomes a tangible reality in our world. And so when you see the reality, what you see in front of you, this Lee that you're looking at, that's the reality of the Lee that I've created. And you know what? I'm very happy with that Lee because I did create it. You see, the creative process is always at work whether you're aware of it or not. We're always thinking, we're always creating, either consciously or unconsciously. Our experiences are the result of this ongoing process of thought, law, and manifestation. This is a big one to understand. Every moment of every day, you are creating. It doesn't matter if you're conscious of it or not. Every thought you think, Every movie you watch, because every movie you watch, you're putting thoughts in. All the social media you want, watch, you're putting thoughts where? In your subconscious mind. And all of those thoughts come together to form your mental atmosphere. And your mental atmosphere is a summation of all your beliefs. That mental atmosphere, it's being created for you every moment of every day. So if you want to change that mental atmosphere, that's the work. That's where the creative process begins. You see, when we align our thoughts with love, abundance, and prosperity, we can create a life that reflects the highest truth of who we are. Powerful, creative beings connected to the infinite mind of the universe. You don't realize it, or maybe you do to some degree, but none of us fully have embodied the idea of how powerful we are. We have the same power that created the universe available to us, and it responds to the nature of our beliefs. I invite you to test this for yourself. Build a belief, and know that you don't build a belief overnight. It takes time to build that belief, to align all your thoughts, words, actions, and feelings toward that specific result. Hold them there consciously and unconsciously, all the time. You see, we have a we believe statement about that in the science of mind. And I think it's important that we look at it and understand it. We believe that universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God. And that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the impress of our thought and acts upon it. In other words, let me break that down just a little bit. We believe that the universal spirit, we believe that the infinite nature that exists everywhere of consciousness, call it God, call it anything you want, it operates through a mind, a universal mind that is everywhere. So the very power that created everything is everywhere present. We call that the law of God. And that we are surrounded by this creative mind. This mind is everywhere, everywhere. And that our thought, our beliefs, are acted on by that law. Here's something you can't hide from the law. The law is always there. Understanding this belief, we also believe in the healing of the sick through the power of this mind. And we believe in the changing of conditions through the power of this mind. In other words, there's nothing that this power cannot do if we work with it and not against it. And to work with it means to create beliefs. And when you create those beliefs, the power of God, the infinite, the universal intelligence, spirit, the mind, is your best partner because it's working right there with you and you will achieve that which you desire. Prove it, because it's the only way you're going to believe it, is when you prove it for yourself. 
with that. It's a great time to begin. It's a great time to be alive. And with that, much love and blessings to you.